Coom Cassius, IFL TV, MTK Global. Fucking geezer. Not even Essex. It's 10 o'clock. Yes, it is. I've tracked Anthony Sims Jr. down. Only reason I opened up the door is because he said room service. <laughs> oh, really? What were you expecting? I can't say that. We're on camera, man. Oh, really? I'm kidding. <laughs> you better be kidding. Hey, I'm focused right now. I'm focused. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm, uh, I'm in England, my second home. I'm officially a Brit now. <laughs> it's mad you're in Essex. I know. But I literally places. live 15 minutes up the road. Yeah, I was walking through uh, the lobby and he was like, do you know Coogan Cassis? Oh, shut up. I was like, yeah, he's skinny, right? He looked like a skinny camel. He was like, yeah, it's him. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, I'll take that because it's late. Yes, if it not, you'd be in some... This interview almost didn't happen, guys, so appreciate it. It nearly didn't because yes. you've probably had a long day. Absolutely, media and just being busy. I've had a long day for different reasons. You obviously had a bit of training as well. I know like your heart hurts from how Anthony got pushed, so I know you're just... You're using I'd have been, do you know what? I, I would have been disappointed if you'd said that you weren't going to do it today. Oh, I know. I mean, you know, you're, you're stuck for time. Everything shouldn't work on my time. It should be mutual, so I was like, you know what? No, it good. should work on your time. It should work on my time. Hey, look, we're brothers, time. man. We're brothers. B-R-U-V-V-A-S, brothers. <laughs> well, um, what have you been doing in Essex, apart from training? Um, trying not to get harassed. <laughs> I'm not trying to get arrested for doing nothing. Because there's some really tough people from around here compared to where you're from. Have you seen the shoes they wear? <laughs> yeah, I saw the socks they don't wear too. Yeah, the socks they don't wear. <laughs> yeah, I, see, like, I don't think you're going to have a problem. This much ankle to calf. Yeah, that's every it. Pants. I see the change in their pockets. <laughs> um, so you're out in action next weekend. March 2nd. March 2nd, Peterborough. Peterborough. Have you ever heard of Peterborough? No, it sounds like a type of, uh, uh, like a type of uh, snack, like peach brittle. Like a what? Peanut brittle. All right. Peterborough peanut brittle. That's what I thought about. <laughs> You've never heard of Peterborough. I'm not surprised. I didn't know you no were... disrespect to Peterborough. But... No, we, I, I hear you, Peterborough. No, I never heard of it. No, I thought it was like a, like a town from, from Harry Potter or some shit like that. Like, You're going Peterborough to see the ways. <laughs> No offense, Jordan. I know it's your hometown. No. Jordan's home place. He's headlining, obviously. Um, great to have you back in the UK. Obviously, you fought in Wales before. Yes. The last time I saw you was in Kansas. Going to Kansas, man. Yeah, Kansas. That, Kansas. that yeah, was quite right. an experience. But your familiar territory for me, not familiar for you, but I mean, when you look out there, it's just road, isn't it? There's nowhere like you can just walk to really here. No, it's fine. I mean, I'm here for one reason. That's just the train, so I'm cool with it. It's real calm and peaceful until I walk out my room and I get stared at and what's he doing here? I'm like, I'm, I'm staying here. What do you mean? What do you need the gym for? I need to run. How long have you been here? I'm like, what are you got these damn questions for? Fucking yikes. Um, excuse me? <laughs> Nothing, sir. No one said that. Yeah, I've heard worse, but they're getting pretty damn close to it. What's been happening? Um, besides waiting to fight, man, um, Say people around me has been opened my eyes up to like so many other topics or issues that's going on that you know I've I've been around people who dealt with it but I never thought about speaking about it. And uh, like when I say it's crazy, it's crazy. Like it changed my my perspective already changes on a daily basis based off what people tell me or seeing you know tragedy in other people's lives. But when you sit down and actually think about it, people you're around, and you listen to their stories, you're like, what the fuck? Like this is really going on before my eyes. And then you realize that you're you know you might. Be a person that's uh, that's helping cause the, the problems in their life, and you don't realize it. It's just like what. So to be more specific, <clears throat> are you ready? The last time, obviously, we spoke, there was uh, <clears throat> we had that interview, which is uh, one of the. I said it to you at the time; it was one of the best interviews I'd ever done for very different reasons to normally interviewing fighters, mm -hmm. and. Um, I think a lot of people kind of related to what you were talking about. Yeah. A lot of people kind of were commenting on going through similar, not the same, but similar issues to what you were talking about. And your message was quite clear that talk. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Yeah. Well, I say this message is um, 
a whole nother, I'll say level of form of just like heaviness. And a lot of people may agree with me, they may not agree with me. You know, that's not the point. The point is just to get out there and say it and see if it may change your perspective. So what I'm about to talk about, man, it's a very touchy subject. Um, a lot of athletes, people with limelight, people that have a platform, they stay away from topics like this because it's very controversial. But um, like I said, if I don't speak about it, then who the hell will? So if you're ready, I'm ready. I'm always ready. Whew, man. So, Coogan, I'm going to ask you a question, all right? Rhetorical question, which means you don't answer the question. I'm going to answer it for you. You got it? All right. So, from this moment now to the day you die, how do you expect to be treated? I want you to think about that for those watching. How do you expect to be treated from the moment right now to the day that you die? Now I'm going to answer the question for you. The way you expect to be treated is with respect, right? Now you can agree, right? Kind of. Okay, but to a certain... You, 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 you expect a certain amount of respect, all right? Oh, I'm going to let you just... Yeah. I'm going to let you talk, but I'm yes. just going to say, if you were asking that to me... Yes. I would say that I would expect to be treated how I treat people. Absolutely. That, but that, that might not be with respect. No. Remember that. I mean, true. I mean, also, okay. I mean, it depends on the person, but overall, okay. on, I say on, on the good side, you want people to, you know, not treat you fucked up just because. So that being said, um, you know, people that you come in contact to, whether you have the same beliefs as them, same morals, same ethics, you know, same perspective, same sex, sexual, you know, beliefs, whatever the case is, you don't, you're not going to treat them fucked up based off their beliefs, are you? Are you going to treat them a certain way because of who they choose to be? Well, people do. I know I'm saying though, but people have, you know, it's a, people judge, all right, but to act on that judgment, to point fingers, to say things to certain people. You don't want someone to do that to you, do you? You know, just don't feel good. For instance, you used to be bigger. Somebody come up like, look at your fat, sloppy ass, or say something just disrespectful, especially if you're sensitive about it. You don't want someone coming up to you and pointing out your flaw, something that you're sensitive about. You know that you were big. You know if you look different than everyone else. You know if you have an issue, right? Regardless of where you come from or who you are, you don't want someone to come up and just point out your flaw or say something to you disrespectful. So, man. Oh, I'm about to go about this. All right, so there's three groups of people. Well, before I even say that, for those who are religious, all right, so Christians, um, we have a belief, right, that in the Bible it says, um, and this is my commandment, love one another as I've loved you, right? I mean, that's that's what we're taught. You know, Ju Judaism, as I say, it, Judaism, you know, they're taught what is hateful to you, don't do to another. You know, and like Hinduism, don't do it to another if it would cause pain done to you. Buddhism, treat not others in a way that would cause harm done to you. Now, these are all religions, all specs of life. Regardless of what part of the world you come from, it's like all around one rule. To treat people with respect and don't treat someone the way that you wouldn't want to be treated. Kind of spin off what you said. You know, you're going to treat someone based off how they treat you. If they treat you bad, you may treat them bad. But overall, the rule is don't treat someone the way that you wouldn't want to be treated, right? you have anything you want to say about that before I go? Because once this shit hit, I'm about to hit. All right? You go. Woo! All right, well... I said, I've been talking to people and um, actually opening my eyes up to like, man, I have my problems, but there's other perspectives of you know, problems and issues that I've never had to deal with because I don't appeal to that or it's not part, it's not me. So with that being said about the whole respect to others and, you know, treat people the way you want to respect it, you know, it's crazy I say that, but there's still, there's groups of people that are treated fucked up. They're neglected, they're disrespected, they're tormented from the day that they realize they're different than everyone else to the day that they die. I mean, think about that. There's groups of people that are fucked with from the moment that they're born and they realize that they're different than everyone else to the moment that they die, that they leave this earth. They'll forever be tormented with, fucked with, joke with, be the butter jokes, always be looked at a certain way, always be judged, always be, always stick out like a sore thumb. In these three groups. The first group is people that look different than us physically. You know, whether they're... Uh, what you would call what you would call it a dwarf, you know, dwarfism. They hate the word midget. It's very disrespectful, but people say it on a daily basis and disrespect them. Or they're physically disabled. As soon as you see them, you know that they're different than everyone else. Whether it's their limbs or they're in a wheelchair. The second group. Now, this is the one that's going to be very touchy. 
LGBT. Everyone knows what that is, right? It's the lesbian, gay community, whatever term you want to use. Excuse my terminology if I'm wrong about it. But that group, people who have a different sexual preference, I can't even begin to think or even accept what it feel like to, to walk outside your house every day knowing you're going to be judged, knowing you're going to be fucked with, knowing that you won't be accepted, knowing that you're going to be tormented, knowing that you'll always be the butt of jokes no matter who you go around. You're, people are always going to point their fingers at you. Can you imagine living a life like that? Now, my stance on it, I'm not for it or against it. I'm for respecting a person. So I just want to be clear. Right now, this isn't about, you know, pro or con. I mean, pro or, 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 or against. It's Respect them because they're human. That's one group. The last group, religious beliefs. I went to school with a lot of Sikhs. You know, Sikhs, they grow their hair out, they wear no bun. They're fucked with every day. Every day, people trying to pull their hair out. People talking about them because they, they didn't cut their hair. You know, Muslims, you're a terrorist. You're this. You know, the girls ripping off their hijabs and shit like that. Just fucking with them. And it's like, how can we teach and preach, you know, love and prosperity and, you know, teach your kids love and teach the people around you love, but yet you're fucking with people that, you know, their beliefs don't coincide with yours. I mean, really think about it, isn't it? It's backwards and fucked up, ain't it? All right, be even deeper about this. We've all joked at one point, you know, see somebody who's a man that likes another man or a woman that likes another woman, and you say, what? Look at this fag. Or look at this lesbian. I mean, be honest, these are the words that you use. These are the terms that people say. Do you know that this year alone, 34,000 people killed themselves in the LGBT community? Now, over 80% of that, they said was caused because of what? Verbal abuse. The words that people are saying to them on a daily basis. Every day. Just beating them down, beating them down, beating them down coming home and hearing it, going outside and hearing it, being poked at, fucked with. 34,000. You do the math. That's 2,833 a day. You divide it even more than you go by the month. I mean, by the, by the hour. Not to put the blame on you, but think about how many times you've pointed or joked. You could have played a part in it. Just like I said, you don't know. Well, I say this. You don't know what your words do to people. I said, just a simple gesture of respect can affect someone's day or break it. You don't know the breaking point people have. It can be over and done with, and then you go, look at this fag, look at this, look at that. And you just push them over the board and didn't even know whether they have a smile on their face or whether they laugh with you. And it's fucked up. I mean, it, it really is. I have, I have an uncle. One's, um, one is, well, twin, I have twin uncles. One happens to be part of the LGBT and the other one isn't. And I've seen him fight for the death for his brother. And I say, well, you know, why don't you just let him handle his business on his own? And he says, well, he's basically me. He's an identical copy of me. He's just me if I chose to go another path. So what I look like standing back and letting him fuck with him. And on a deeper level, for those watching, I'm preaching on this so heavy because, you know, imagine your kid going outside every day being fucked with, tormented. I was, but I was tormented because of my ability to learn, my ability to speak, not because of my sexual preference. Same thing though. She's still getting fucked with for a reason, bullied and, and tortured. And I said a lot of athletes won't speak about it. But if you do the math, you know, four point four point five percent of the of the of the population on the earth is part of the LGBT. Four point five percent? Like that's a fucking lot. So actually my fault, not the earth the United States. So if you do the math, um, that's in every twenty five women, that's three women. And every 25 men, that's six. So they're all around. They're all around you. And it's just like, I'm trying to br I bring awareness to mental illness. And this mental illness and this has nothing. They don't, they're not even, even the same category. But how can I bring awareness to mental illness and people killing themselves? And I bring awareness to people being fucking bullied and judged for their beliefs and killing themselves. For those that follow me on Instagram, I want you to go look. My Instagram is the magician, Anthony Sims Jr. The guy I'm always with, with I call him my pops, Frog Dog. You've seen him, Frog. Mm. He's an aggressive, you know, guy from from Compton. Compton, aggressive cat, manly man, very proud of himself. You would never guess that his son's a dwarf. Ever. And the reason I'm speaking of this is because he said, you know, I want you to speak up for the little people. And I was like, what do you mean? He said, man, you know how many kids 
dwarfs kill themselves because they go to public schools. And my fucking joke and fuck with him all day. He said he was lucky enough to put his son in private school so he didn't really have to worry about that. But he said, think about the less fortunate ones who can't afford it. It's the, it's the voices that you never hear about. And that's, I say, that's who I am. The voices that you that are muffled, that you that people don't talk about. It's in the, you call it the back of the bus or the back of the room. Shit that's overwalked and looked over. And it's just fucked up, man. I feel like Regardless of a person's beliefs, who they choose to love, what they choose to do, it shouldn't fucking matter as long as it doesn't harm you, harm themselves, or harm others. Happiness is in your eyes, it's in your choosing. So who the fuck am I to tell you what to go do? If it's not harming yourself, harming me, or harming others, then, you know, it's not my judgment, it's not my, my play to make. Go ahead, Google. The biggest thing that's happened, kind of a change or one of the biggest things that's happened is the power of the internet oh, over man. the last 20 years. Yeah. And as a positive thing that if you choose to make it a positive thing, it can be a positive thing. But on the flip side of it, it kind of opens up doors to what you're talking about that never existed 20 years ago. Yeah. If you, if you wanted to kind of vent your feelings towards someone's sexuality, their religion, 20 years ago, you would either do it within your company or you wouldn't do it at all. No. Or if you're that way inclined, you'd, you'd do it to the person in the street, but not many people do that. No. It's a, it's a minority of people that will physically go up to you in the street mm -hmm. and say, oh, you're black or you're gay or yeah. whatever. That does happen, but that's in the minority. Yes. So the whole social media, internet world is now allowed or it's deemed acceptable. It's not, but it's deemed acceptable for me to tweet you something or DM you something mm -hmm. or write on your Facebook because I know that I'm a hundred miles away. I might be in a different country so I can air my views and really there's nothing you can do about it. If someone's to call you a black whatever yeah. from England and you're in America, what are you going to do about it? Nothing you can do about it. No, unless you want to take things to no, <laughs> extreme to measures. The, to the extreme. But yeah. there's nothing you can do about it. So it's opened up doors to be able to do it. That's the negative mm -hmm. side of it. So you, you have to kind of take the positive with the negative. Absolutely. Okay. I, so, I, I feel like it's actually gotten out worse. I mean, or it's just as bad someone calling you that on social media. It's just the same as they called it to your face in front of your friends because that's who's going to see it. You know, everyone that you love and care about, you know, and see. And uh, it's just like, man, I'm at a point now, like I said, you know, you're, I realize my life is not about me. It's about others. So I want to make sure I spread that message in every territory possible. I can't preach love and prosperity and good vibes. And, you know, love everybody and be happy, but I'm leaving out groups because of their beliefs. You, you feel what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. it's a very, like I said, it's a very, very, very touchy subject. I don't think that the majority of people that kind of are this way really register the the end product of what they're doing. So what, what it has the potential to be. So I shall explain in more detail of what's what's No, I just to? yeah, well, I was just saying that I don't think that they really realise sometimes and that's not for everyone. Some people just wanna do that and mm. if someone kills himself off the back of something that they're saying then they look at it as not their problem there yeah. are people out there that look look at it like that yeah. but I think a lot of people don't really kind of realize the impact of what you're saying the what to them could be loose words or just a tweet or or just a a passing comment or anything but you don't really know when that person goes home what could be what could be fatally the end product absolutely um so put in perspective for those watching, <clears throat> if you, you know, it's, it's okay to feel a certain way towards someone, but if you voice it, right, and you voice it and you say, well, I'm entitled to say what the fuck I want to say, and if they feel how they feel, that's whatever. Put it in perspective of someone you love. Would you want someone saying these same things to them? Not only that, the tongue is a deadly weapon. So the tongue is a sword. Once you say those words, you cut people up not even knowing it. You never speak on a person to speak to them in a certain fashion, not knowing what they're about to go home or go home into. It's just, uh, 
it's not right. For, for those who don't know, like, you know, high school is really rough coming up to me. I got in fights all the time. I ain't getting in fights because I was a badass. I got in a fight because I stood up for the people who, you know, was walked over. And that was with LGBT kids. Kids that was handicapped. But kids that was just like me that had a learning disability. So I stayed in trouble fighting. And standing up for them and making sure I was a voice for them. Just because I have a platform now and, you know, I'm on TV and I'm fighting and shit like that don't mean I'm going to stop. So, um, with that being said, like I said, it's a very, very touchy subject. You know, you talk about religion and sex and beliefs. That's very. And I'm not saying, you know, do this or do that. All I'm saying is respect the fact that they're a human being and they have feelings too. Now, if you have anything nice to say, don't say shit at all. It's very simple. I'm not telling you, you can't feel a certain way. Well, these are my beliefs and these are his beliefs. Okay. Leave the beliefs at the door. At the end of the day, that's a human being. I mean, you feel what I'm saying? I don't, maybe, some, maybe that's going over people's heads. The fact is, you don't have to agree with everything somebody else does. You have to agree with who they love, you know, who, what God they believe in. At the end of the day, we're all the same, regardless of skin color, regardless of what part of the world we come home to, or, go, or what part of the world we're from. We both bleed red. We both have a heartbeat. We both got arms and legs and, and heads, some bigger than others, like Coogan's. But um, like on a serious tip, it shouldn't matter. You shouldn't beat and bust somebody down and break them down and say harsh words just because their beliefs don't coincide with yours. I know people, say people, I've known two people in the last three years to have committed suicide mm -hmm. from <clears throat> social media abuse. Mm -hmm. Two people. That's too, too many. Too, too many. Absolutely. And that this happens regularly in everyone's lives across the world it happens and i think people don't really kind of register that it's a thing they don't they don't register that how can someone go and commit suicide from you saying xyz to them constantly every day it's, a, it's the same thing as if you said it to them in person but if you said it to them in person that's one thing the fact that you say it on the internet it's there and everyone can see it people that don't even know you can see it and they begin to judge you and hop right on in happens every day it's just it's not spoke about people don't speak on it why because it's a topic people want to stay away from but in actuality like i said it's happened all around us and um if like fuck like if, if nobody speaks on it then it's not going to change the cycle it's just going to continue continue now can i change the cycle i'm one man absolutely it'll be hard to but like i said if one person can almost make this this road a, a, a awful place almost conquer it hitler you know, you know, people don't like to speak about them, but, you know, it actually happened. If one person can almost conquer this world, another person can do the complete opposite. Did you used to be homophobic um, no, when you I, were younger? At a, at a young age, I, I I didn't feel that way. My mother taught me different. She taught me that, you know, it's crazy. My mother taught me, she's like, you know, just because a man likes a man don't mean that he likes you. You know, I'd be surprised. They have types, just like we have types. And I'm not, I'm not telling you, like, you know, that's not the case. They like all men or women like all women. You know, um, my mother told me, don't judge someone for their preference. It ain't got shit to do with you. As long as they keep it to, I feel like this. Respect my space. Don't cross the line. You know what I'm saying? Like hitting on me or some shit like that. Then we're cool. You know what I'm saying? We can be boys. We can be homies. I had played with homies on the football team. Box with cats. We could call in the closet like they kept it a secret. We knew, but they never acted on it. I wasn't tripping. I didn't treat them a certain way because of how they felt. They already dealt with enough on a daily basis. You know, keeping that inside. So, um, no, I wasn't. Not at all. Why do you think that boxers are reluctant to come out with their sexual preferences? Um, first of all, boxing's supposed to be a macho, macho man game. So, it's like the fact that he's part of the LGBT community. Like, what? Maybe they think they lose respect. Maybe they think that, uh, you know, guys don't want to fight him. They'll be disrespected. They'll be a joke. There's no... There's nothing worse for a fighter to be humiliated on a national stage. And, you know, for you to come out and say that it might lift the burden off your chest, but it can be, a, it can also, you know, there's going to be a negative side to it, too. And I think that's, you know, boxer's biggest fear. Worst thing that can happen to us is being embarrassed on national television or being embarrassed in general. Because we're prideful, we're fighters, we're warriors. So the last thing we want someone to do is, you know, to crack a joke on us or for us to be a joke. Do you think that would change? people's perception of a favorite fighter if they came out 
as homosexual? Do you think that that would the a large proportion of their fan base would think I don't want to be there. Uh, I don't want to be a supporter of this fighter anymore because of their sexual preference. Do you well, believe that that to think, be true? I think possibly because people's mindset, they're so closed-minded that just because just because of who he loves shouldn't dictate whether you're a fan or not. Just because his beliefs shouldn't dictate whether you go and see him or not. You don't come to see him because of his beliefs or who he loves. You come to see him because of his skill that he shows in the box ring, right? But people don't see him that way. I mean... Say for instance, if you if you were if you liked men, I'm not going to stop coming and seeing you, doing these interviews, because you like men. We don't do interviews because you because of who you love or who you go home to. We do interviews because me, you have a good connection. We have chemistry. We're boys, and this is what we do. That shouldn't stop it. But everyone doesn't have that mindset. You know, you, people say I love people and I'm a good person, this and that. But you know, as soon as you find something out that you don't agree with, you treat them like shit. It's not specific to <coughs> sexual preference. It could be their their religion or religion is even that's even yeah. a bigger one. When you find out someone else, you know, I was raised around Muslims, you know, um, um, you know, Hindu, Sikh, Punjabi, like you know, all different all different religions. And one thing I learned is have mutual respect for everyone. You can't treat somebody fucked up based off who they choose to pray to or you know what God they choose to pray to. It ain't got nothing to do with you. What's this rut of, you know, how it's made us see, you know, Muslims, all Muslims are terrorists. And, I mean, on social media, every time you see something about Muslims, they always try to make it something negative. I mean, I'm a Christian. I don't bash Muslims for who they believe in. I don't bash Hindus for who they believe in. Like, who, like, who, like, who the fuck am I to, to be judging? I, you know what? I excuse my language and I'm going to talk about religion, but it's like, I'm pretty sure in most religions, it's like, you're, we're not supposed to judge. You know, God just judges us. I don't think we're supposed to judge each other. I'm pretty sure that's like kind of a standard rule in, in in all the religions. It's not us for judgment. We all when we all die we're gonna be judged, right? I mean so what do you think? I know you're not very religious, but like Christians you believe we're gonna be judged. Um uh, Islam and Muslims, they believe they're gonna be judged. Judgment I'm probably more honest. religious than you think. Who I am? Probably no, I am. Oh. And I'm probably more religious than I think. I hope that makes any sense whatsoever. What? <laughs> I said I am probably I heard what you said right okay just because you don't go to a church or a temple or a mm -hmm. mosque doesn't mean it doesn't make you any less religious no. than someone who does go to one that's all I'm saying no absolutely um, I was um, in a bar many years ago and the boxing was on this is before I was even filming and Amir Khan was mm -hmm. fighting Predis Prescott. Okay. Do you remember the fight? No. Okay. Well, Amir Khan, I can't remember which round it was, got knocked out in the fight quite badly, mm -hmm. and it was a bit of a shock. I was in this bar watching it, and everyone was in shock. Mm -hmm. The guy next to me says, oh, I'm fucking glad he got knocked out. Mm -hmm. and, I went, and I turned around and went, oh, why is that then? Well, he's one of them, isn't he? And I went, one of who? He said, you know, he's one of them. He's a fucking Muslim, he went. Wow. Right, this is what he said. And I said, that's why you wanted him to get knocked out, because he's a Muslim. And he went, yeah. So I just had to just get, absolutely get away from him then, because I just thought, he actually said that to me. Yeah. And now he doesn't know whether I'm a Muslim or he doesn't know whether he's offending me. He mm. obviously didn't care. Was a little bit intoxicated, which there's no excuse for any way to come out of a comment like that. But that was his reason for being happy that Amir Khan had been knocked out because he's one of them. That's the exact words he said to me. Um, I was disgusted by it. Oh, yeah. Literally, yeah. Just like... Very. You're not for me. When you open your eyes up and you actually see it, I mean, like, you know, you're aware. When you're aware of, like, you know, how disgusting and racist and prejudiced people can be or sexist towards people. You actually open your eyes up to it. It'll disgust you. The fact that he said something like that. The fact that I was at the airport and this guy dismissed the whole thing. You know, people being mental illness. That's a fucking joke. You're depressed. That's a fucking joke. Shit like that. Or the fact there's a, a man, you know, if he decides to marry another man. It's fucking disgusting. That's just in this. Feel the fuck you want to feel about it, but you don't go out saying shit like that. You just don't. You're entitled to your own 
feelings, you know, however you want to feel. But certain things you just don't fucking say. And it's just like, the fact that people actually think, you know what you said, he's a Muslim, happy you got with, with, with like, hatred is all that around. It's a mentality. Right? Yeah, it is. Um, like I said, the conversation ended very abruptly then. But, listen, if you don't agree with homosexuality, mm -hmm. you have the right not to agree with it. Absolutely. If you don't agree with something else, you have the right. Yes. Okay, that's that's everyone's right to kind of... You haven't got to agree with something just because it's accepted or whatever. You can have your own beliefs. But there's no reason to physically go or mentally go out of your way to let that thought be told to the person we're talking about. Absolutely. For those that are just watching, basically we're saying the same thing. You cannot agree with it. That's fine. I'm not telling you to be for it or be against it. All I'm telling you is don't go out of your way and say something to a person you, that you don't share mutual beliefs for. Unless they're, I say, unless they cross that line, they're trying to force their beliefs on you. Then that's one thing. I understand that. But don't go out of your way to say hurtful words to put someone down and shame, shame, shame them because at the end of the day, what is it doing? It's causing nothing but pain. And I was always taught, ignorance is lack of knowledge. Shit that people say like that is fucking ignorant, you know. You're, th you're this, you're that, you're disgusting, you're going to hell, you're this and that. If you had any type of knowledge, you know that the first thing is it's not your place to say anything. The second, it's not your job to judge people. Let people live their fucking lives as long as it's not affecting you. Um, Again, I'm not stand on it. And I said I'm not for it or against it. I'm for it. I'm pro-human, human, human being. Love and respect them just because they're human. They have feelings. They're not a fucking robot you say shit to and they go home and plug up to a battery and then come outside again. Um, and again, those that don't realize, just try to imagine. It was hard for me coming out of my house every day. <coughs> knowing I'm going to be fucked with as soon as I get on the bus. I might get beat up because I can't talk. I'm going to be fucking laughing joke in front of everybody when it's time to read in front of class. I can't go to recess because I have to practice reading. The teacher won't let me play unless I read properly. Then I'm going to get back on this little ass fucking bus where all my friends get on a different bus. I'm going to go home, be fucked with some more. Go to the boxing gym, be fucked with some more. Come home and be with my mom just for a little bit. Feel better and have to do this shit every day. Now, luckily I grew out of that because I, you know, I had a, I got the ability back to read and write and speak. And, I was, uh, and things started picking up for me and my life blossomed. Imagine if that's your day every day for the rest of your life because of who you choose to pray to or because of who you choose to love. You're fucked with and tormented every day of your life until you die because of who you choose to pray to, who you choose to love, or because of how you physically look. You can't control any of those things. Shit, do what you want to do as long as it makes you happy. Pray to who you want to pray to as long as it gives you peace and prosperity. If you look physically different than everyone, that's not in your control, whether you're in a wheelchair, whether you're smaller than everyone else, whether you have a physical disability, your limbs is something, you know, something's different about you. Think about that shit before you speak on or before you poke or before you joke and especially in front of your kids before you allow them to do it. Know that that's someone's son, that's someone's daughter, that's someone's mother, that's someone's father, that's someone's brother, that's someone's sister, that's a human being that has feelings. And the worst <coughs> part is they know for a fact when you're fucking with them or you're joking or you're, you're snickering, they know they hear it. They're aware of it because they've been around it their whole life. Every time people fucked with me and joked with me, I know he's talking about me. They didn't have to look at me. I heard it. I could feel it. When that shit happens to you, a lot. I mean, come on, Cougar, when you was bigger, you know when people's talking about you because you're calling you fat or laughing or pointing at you or like, whoa. You can feel it. So, like I said, my name is Anthony Sims Jr. Um, yes, I'm a I'm a fighter. I'm on Sky Sports. I'm actually I have a name now. But most importantly, I'm just a human being with feelings, just like anyone else. I'm trying to make you aware that, regardless of how someone looks. How they physically appear, how strong they may come off, how prideful they may be. They have feelings just like you do. I want to be respected. At the end of the day, that's all I'm preaching is just respect, a mutual respect, just like that. So go ahead with these questions you have, Coogan. I suppose we'd better talk about some boxing. I mean, we could talk about boxing, but we could just talk about life too. That's what we usually talk about. We always talk about a little bit of boxing, but nobody wants to hear boxing this and boxing that. 
people want to hear stuff that when they walk away from this video, they learn something new or they can yeah. take it with them. Yeah, listen, we don't have to talk about boxing. Yeah, I don't just... want to talk about what fuck talking about. I've been talking about boxing all damn day. All right, let's talk about some other shit. Let's talk about some real shit. You hear that? What did you think of the, um, oh. the Liam Neeson situation? What's that? You don't know about it. Who was that? Explain it to me. It's IFL. You can say whatever. All right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, right? So I'm going to stop the camera and I'm going to just show you a couple of things and explain to you and then we'll come back to it. Okay. We shall return very shortly. Right, okay. Well, I was actually just then explaining to Anthony St. Jr. I knew exactly who he was talking about. you knew what I was talking about. You know so we didn't said? have to look anything up. He's, he was like, you know what I'm talking about? I'm like, no. And he said, Coogan said, he said, I have a series of skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. I will find you and I will kill you. I was like, I know exactly. You're talking about the guy from Taken. <laughs> okay. What did you make of that situation? It was... Uh, it's quite bizarre that he come out with it, but it's what happened and what he thought. Was he wrong to say that? Um, I feel like this. You really don't know what the hell is going on in his mind or who he really is deep down. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. You don't know if he's actually, this how he actually feels or he's saying it's out of guilt or he's saying it's because he wants to make peace or he's saying this, I don't know, for fans thinking he'll get some type of publicity from it. I don't know. Is he wrong to feel that way? Hatred for another person because of their skin? Absolutely. That's racism. All the way. So some black person did something to one of yours, so you're going to go into um, a city or, you know, or the hood and hoping that someone will walk up to you just so you can let your feelings out on it? Like, that's not racist. I don't know what the hell it is. You didn't go into Hollywood or Beverly Hills. You didn't go into Malibu or Essex. You know, you went somewhere you knew black people were and targeted them. That's fucked up and not even because I'm black the fact is if, if it was a black person did to a white person that's fucked up it's still racist was he wrong for talking about it and also saying that he kind of feels and openly admits that after however many days that he knew that what he his feelings and his thoughts were were wrong is he wrong for even bringing that up and kind of making people aware of his thoughts I'm gonna say this. I'm a. I gotta. I gotta respect the man for, to a certain extent, for his beliefs and what he stands on. So if he feels like you know I need to say this and get this off my chest, I respect you for it. But I'm not a fool. I'm gonna see you for what you are. If that's your feelings towards something that happened to your family. If it happened again, what would you do? Deep down, what are your true feelings towards us black people? Or if he was black and it happened to a white person, us white people, regardless of race. Uh, like I said, I, res I respect you for being honest. That's what, kudos. Good job. But the fact is, that shit's in you. And usually when people come out about shit, you know it's not the first time some shit that happened, right? That's why I always, my mom always, always tell me, you know, when you do something, you get caught doing something, it's not the first time. So ain't no telling. Maybe it's actual guilt getting to him and he gotta actually talk about it. Maybe not. I don't know. But, um, that's fucked up. It was a bit, of, yeah. Like I said, it was a, a, a strange thing to, that he came out. We say strange. It was, it was bizarre that he. I found it bizarre that he kind of admitted to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't you can't be accountable for everyone's thoughts that they've had all the way through their lives, and maybe people have had similar thoughts, mm -hmm. and maybe they haven't. I don't know. You can only know for yourself. But maybe there was kind of a, an agenda behind him. Um, wanting to voice that. Maybe, but like I said, on this side, it's not a good look as far as us. I mean, I say us, not to I'll put us in the category, but minority black black people. White people would take different to it. Not even trying to be racist or being in any way, but like, you know, that's good that he's saying that. That's a, that's awesome. Maybe the majority crowd, maybe not, you know. We're so happy that he's honest about that. But we're, the people that could have possibly happened to, you think about it, like, man, what if he went off in my neighborhood and did that shit? You know, he wasn't targeting white males or white people. He's targeting black people. Makes you think about it. What if he just went into my neighborhood and just started willing off on motherfuckers? It could have been my son, my daughter. He's waiting for just an innocent person to walk up and say anything to him and get close. Um, you know, regardless of the reason he did that, everybody's going to have their own perspective on it. But the perspective really changes when it comes down to the people he's actually looking for. You know, African Americans, black people. And um, for those of you watching... I'm not, uh, you know, black lives matter. I'm all lives matter, regardless of skin color. 
I'm not I'm not even gonna play that card. It's just how I am. I don't care what color you are. I don't approve of racism. I just don't. Whether you're white, you're black, you're yellow, I'm just not for it. When was the last time you believe you were subject to any kind of discrimination because of your colour? Last night. Okay, what happened last night? Um, I had went to a gym and uh, the man asked me what I was doing here. I said, I came here to run. And he says, you're staying here. And I say, no, I just walked in. And he's like, well, you can't be here. I said, I didn't just fucking walk in. I got a room key. Like, I'm staying here. So I was running on the treadmill. My headphones died. So I kept playing my music. My music wasn't loud. You can't hear it off the treadmill. Walked up to me. Sir, can you turn down your music? My music was on the fourth bubble on the iPhone. You know when you hit the, you turn it up? The fourth little square. My music was on the fourth square. I said, ain't no way you can hear my music. It's bothering all the people here. Can you please turn it down? It was just one other person there on the treadmill next to me. They didn't say anything. It's like he's just fucking with me. I went to actually, uh, actually, you know what? A few minutes ago, well, an hour ago, I went to get some, um, some food. And I walked up to the waitress and they just stared at me. And I'm like, so, um, are you going to seat me? And they're like, you want to eat in here? I said, yeah. Why, where else, where the hell is I going to eat at? And they're like, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure. What the fuck you mean I'm not sure? Now, I, before I walked in, I saw two other people walk up, and I, they just happened to be white. Essex white folks walk up and uh, gave them a menu, sat them down. I walked up, they act like they want to give me a menu. So, um, when people say, you know, especially in the United States, you know, racism is back. It's not like it's a person that it, it was hiding and just hot back out. Racism has always been around. Even, you know, racism exists even with blacks towards whites. Not just, you know, white folks being racist to black people, but white folks can be racist to white people. You know, treat them a certain way. You know, you're just like, okay, neighborhood. Hood, it's always one or two, you know, white families. They get treated fucked up. The kids get treated fucked up. Usually. Sometimes they're accepted. It's just, it's like, it, it, you know, you always have those two races that go back and forth. You know, the way there's whites and Asians or black and whites or blacks and Mexicans or Mexicans and Asians, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, be honest, it's, it's, racism is just white on black or black on white. It's so many other races. Okay. Um, what, well, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Why, why are you convinced yes. that those two situations you spoke about mm -hmm. were down to the color of your skin? Because I didn't speak. If I would have spoken. And so before anything, before whatever happened, whoever it was said something to you first yes before they heard you speak yeah now i understand if it had been me speaking me being american they're like what is he doing here he's essex that's one thing the fact is there's other people my skin color your skin color to work in this hotel they're staying at this hotel that's walking around in this hotel the fact that i walked up and before i could speak they asked me the question before i could speak downstairs in the treadmill in the gym oh excuse me sir what are you doing here i'm about to run you staying in here? Right here? No, I just walked just walked in. You gotta have a key to get in too, by the way. Um I just I try to stay away, like I said, I try to stay away from shit like racism. You know, that's a touchy subject too, but the shit happens every day. I said it can happen. Racism happens to you, people treat you a certain way because like you said, have you ever been treated a certain way because someone thought you was a Muslim? Here? What about America? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, same way. I get it at the airport every day. Okay, exactly. <laughs> you know what? I don't, that's probably wrong of me to say that, but I do go through the security, mm -hmm. and whenever I get pulled, you know, you know, sometimes you know you've got nothing in your pockets. Yeah. You know, I, I, before yesterday, I was, I was leaving New York, right? <laughs> and I, I purposely, I'm like, what, like I have tracksuit on, nothing metal, everything's out of my pockets. Mm -hmm. What is it? that's got a sharp on there that makes them now pull me. So I don't know how the system works, whether it's random, whether it's one in every They say few, it's random. random. <laughs> so when I, walk, when I walk through the security, I'm like now convinced there's nothing in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Full body search when I get out. I'm like... You can walk through there butt-ass naked, they're still going to do a full body search. <laughs> and then when I got to Gatwick this morning, mm -hmm. I was in a bit of a hurry because I had to go to another press conference. 
So I'm walking through customs and I see one woman look at me and I knew, I just knew I'm getting, I'm pulled here, right? Let's, so, book, let's book him. I've got this fake fur coat on, right? Six foot five. Like that one? No, no. no that's not fur. <laughs> or fake fur, should I say. Um, walking through and she says, why are you looking at me like that? This is what she said. Why are you looking at me like that? This woman. And I said, because um, I'm in a hurry. Because I was. I was literally grabbing my bag. I was get, trying to get my car and get to this press conference. Had like an hour and 20 minutes to do it. And so I said, I'm in a hurry, my dear. I said, so you do what you've got to do. So I started opening my bag, thinking that's what, if they pull you to the side when you're leaving, that's what they're like, going to search your bag. So before I opened it, she said, whoa, 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 whoa. She said, I haven't asked you to open that. I said, okay. She said, where have you been? And I said, uh, I've been to a press conference, which is where I've been. And she went, oh, what, not for Anthony Joshua? And I went, yeah. And she said, wow. How, you know, I saw it on TV. And, and she starts talking to me about boxing. Then I said, look. So I had the conversation with her. And then she said, and then I went to open my bag again. And she said, you're fine. And uh, you can go. Mm -hmm. So she, so the reason why she pulled me over, or pulled me through to the customs bit, what what should it have been for? It should have been to search my bag, correct? Yes. But my bag wasn't searched. So you know the reason of what it was for. So what what am I meant to think about that? Mm -hmm. We had a conversation. She, you know, for about two minutes about boxing, and she was saying she was oh looking forward to watching a a a Anthony Joshua fight, and I was so I was thinking to myself, why did you pull me over then if you're not gonna? Because I thought that's the whole point of it. They want to kind of see what you've brought back or whether you've got things in there that you're not meant to have. But she didn't end up searching my bag and just told me to go after we'd had a two-minute conversation. So I'm thinking, am I cynical enough to think that that was kind of... Did you, did you just hear the story? Did you hear our story? So we're not just pulling a race car. They're racist, so they stopped this at the airport. They're racist, so they did this. The fact is, it's strict protocol. The fact that she didn't go through the bag check. If she did, then maybe it would have put it in there. The fact that she said, oh, no, you're fine now. But she pulled you for a reason. She didn't know you worked for for, uh, for Anthony Joshua and shit like that. For instance, me. I didn't get a chance to speak. I wasn't dressed a certain way. I didn't look a certain way. I looked just like everyone else. But as soon as I walked up, and mind you this, there's no black people or you know, people of my skin color sitting in this, in this area. And I, I was like, man, you know. It's, it's it's fucked up. But the same way they do with race, they do with religion, they do with the set, with the person's sexual preference. Now that we spoke about it, I mean, really think about it. Am, am I lying? If I'm lying, I'm dying. What's the saying? If I'm lying, I'm dying. And I ain't dead yet. We gotta talk about this shit. You know? And for those talk. watching again, this is the main message besides that. Parents watching this, um, you know, kids watching this, um, it's okay to be frustrated and confused in life. It's okay to deal with adversity. It's okay to know that you're different than everyone else. It's okay to know that you're not what people consider the norm. But what it's not okay to do is it's not okay to not talk about it. So adults watching this, um, celebrities watching this, people that deal with people on a daily basis, if you run a lot of people every day, make it a point to let people know that it's okay for them to express their biggest fears. And their biggest dreams to you. To let them to to let you know how they really feel. Because once you once they do, you can give them the courage to overcome their fears and encourage them to go after their dream. My mother, my my mother tell me, um, Anthony, you need to Theo. So Theo, Theo means uncle, right? It's spelled T I O. Theo, talk it out, all right. So. For those watching, you know, kids, if you don't know how to go... Hashtag home, this interview, actually. Yes, you please do. Deal. For those, deal. Like, for those not watching the kids, if you don't know how to come to your parents and talk to them about it, you know, make it fun. Icebreaker. You can be Scarface for three minutes. Hey, mom. I know the deal. And see, I'm like, what the fuck you mean, Gage? What's the deal? You're like, I need to fucking deal ahora, eh, culo. I need to. I need to deal. And then you're like, deal, talk it out. And they're like, well, what do you want to talk about? Boom. Let it out. Just like that. So that's my new, to let you guys know. So my mom told me, I need to deal. Talk it out. All right, that's the challenge. The deal challenge. Talk it out.
If you've watched this interview and you can relate to any of it, or even if you just like the interview, hashtag this interview. Uh, Tio. T I O. Yes, T I O. And we know and, that you've um, watched this. For those watching, if I didn't get back to you on Twitter, I'm not really a big Twitter person. Like DMing is so hard on Twitter. Hit me up on Instagram. Like I said, I'm more than happy to talk to you guys. Just talk it out. The uh, only reason I'm here right now, where I'm at, is because I had people to talk it out to, whether it was strangers, neighbors, whatever the case was. Um, and I said, at the end of the day, I may be a big fighter and want to come up and. You know, I'm actually getting limelight and, and love now, but I'm just a person with feelings just like you that needs to talk it out sometimes. And that's where Coogan comes in, so I can deal. Talk it out. Coogan. Um, who, who the fuck says Coogan? Is that what I said? Yeah. <laughs> Coogan. <laughs> you make me uh, sound like, uh, like Yoda or some shit on the store. Coogan. Tony. It's Tony on Tony. Um, have you watched The Only Way is Essex? No. Do, do you know what that is? It sounds like a show I would never watch. A shower? A show. Oh, show. <laughs> yeah, it is a show. It's a reality show. About what? Just... Essex people? Well, stereotypical Essex people. Mm. Oh, is it like a, like, like a Jersey Shore? Like, yes, oh, correct. I definitely wouldn't watch this. So, let's, let's see what you'd be like in The Only Way is Essex. So just repeat after me. A right, babe. <laughs> Come on. Just do it. Just say. Say what? Ready? <laughs> say what? Hold on, let me look at you. Ready? You want me to say what? I'm out, babe. I'm out, babe. <laughs> no, you got to... Come on. Just do, do... Wait, where's this coming from? My chest? Like... It's a little high pitch, isn't it? <laughs> I'm out, babe. Let me proper hold up. Get my... All right, come on. All right, babe. <laughs> <laughs> like... Just repeat after me. Why is the high pitch? Is this a female or a male? This is a female. Why are you got me doing this? Because this is like... Just, just roll okay, with okay. it. Just roll with it. All right, ready? Hey, hold up. The homies in Compton watching this. Look, it's just for me and Cougar. What are you worried right? about? It? Don't apologise for no one. You're in Essex now. You're going to do this. Ready? Sims, ready? All right, all right. All right, babe. All right, babe. Like, he said he liked me, but I don't know if he really, really likes me. He doesn't like me. I don't know if he really likes me. Like, do you think he does like me? Like, do you think he's a pop geezer? It is a proper geezer who drives a Ferrari. What? Is his name Itty Hines? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you make me cramp up over I'll here. I'll see you Saturday, babe, at, um, Baz Vegas. He's in Vegas? No. <laughs> no. Baz Vegas. Oh. That's Basildon, which is up the road. They call it Baz Vegas, which is named after, obviously... Well, I like I like Wales better. You like Wales better? To a certain extent. Oh, look, <laughs> we're not gonna continue this conversation by the hey, way. No, but I just like um I like I like I like South London, Kingston, I like areas like that. Here it's cool, but it's just like I don't know, it's, it's not my cup of tea. Alright, bye. I'm not saying it. Anthony Sims, thank you very much for your time tonight. Um, wish you the best of luck. I will be in Peterborough, so we will catch up in Peterborough at some point. Alright. But I kind of like that this interview really had fuck all to do with boxing. Um, I mean, think about it. You've been talking about nothing but fucking boxing and my life is boxing, so I don't want to talk about the shit all day. You know, just being honest oh. about it. And it's oh. a time where I can talk about whatever the hell I want to talk about. Oh, I appreciate that. I can't, you know, I was scared to be on Sky Sports because I felt like I was going to drop some F-bombs. I felt it. I just felt it. Was Spencer Fear on there? Um, no, it was like Wooly. Anna Woolhouse. Yeah, and... um. The guy that said like a skinny camel. <laughs> Andy Clark. Andy Clark. Yes. Pull him up on that. Please do. Um, thank you very much for your time. I'm going to let you go to sleep if that's what you're doing now. Thank you. And I said, guys, don't hesitate to hit me up. We can talk about it. Talk it out. Deal. And uh, respect people for their beliefs. That you was a love and how they look. They still like to live. And who are you to tell them any different? Peace. And prosperity.